Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightSailVR.com. In this video, we're going to look at a new plugin that I made. Right now, the working title is LSVR Tools, and I'm still very much in development. But I wanted to go ahead and put this out there. A lot of people want to try the beta, so I want to go ahead and put this out there, make a tutorial so I can show you what it is. I will talk more about what it is and why it is and how to install it at the end of this video. For now, I just want to jump right in. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this sky so there's no, nothing lighting our sky. So the basic part of this plugin is that you can quickly add in a sky. And the sky has a sun component, it has a backdrop component, it has a post-process component, and if you use path tracing, it has a way to switch into path tracing. For instance, if I switch over to path tracing now with a normal HDRI backdrop, the, the background is black, but you can just click this checkbox and it will do some tricks to make it work for path tracing. So I have many different HDRIs here. I'm just going to bring in a few. So you can see. And each one has a sun component set up uh, in a very specific way. So for instance, if we look at this one from Venice Beach, you can see it casts long shadows from this direction. And you'll notice also if I come down in here, and we'll talk about this in a minute, you have the sun color is this light yellow. So the color of this scene is, is this light yellow. The sun color specifically is this light yellow. And if I turn this off and bring in the next one, you'll see that it's more of a dark gold. So the sun is, is customized for each scene. Of course, you can continue to adjust these however you want, but each one has um, uh, our setup to match the HDRI that was that was here. So let me go ahead and bring in the next one. This one is just a, a blurry beach background. So if you want a blurry one, and then I also have this um, this sunset CG one. I think I rendered this in Octane a long time ago. So I have I think a total of like 20 HDRIs. So I haven't added them all yet. Um, this is just sort of a work in progress. But let me go ahead and turn this off and go look into a few of these in a little bit, little bit more detail. So if we just go to this master one real quick. So let's look at what is basically happening underneath the hood. So basically you have all of these things attached to a master actor. And from this top one, you can control a lot of the most common ones that I constantly need to add. So why, why did I do this and what, what is the benefit? Um, let's get into it. So so the reason I started this add-on was basically because I found that the normal HDRI backdrop that ships with Unreal Engine is very limiting. First of all, it's very confusing. Um, you have to know a lot about it and you have to do a lot of things that you might not understand. Um, and the very first thing is that if you use path tracing, um, like in the, in the default one, if you use path tracing, the background goes black. So I fixed that by a, a workaround that's kind of silly, but I fixed it. Okay, so I already showed you that I fixed the path tracing issue. And what are some of the other things I did? So I added a sun component, and you can quickly turn it on or off by using this button here. Um, I quickly added a way for you to see or not see the backdrop, as well as the, um, the post process. There's different ways you can, you can change the brightness of your scene, right? In this example, you have a sun, you have a sky, you have a backdrop, and you also have, a, it, it, I've put exposure compensation. This is exposure compensation from your post-process volume. So basically I can control all of my brightness settings for the entire scene right here from these four things. So if I want to make the, the sun more intense, I can do that. If I want to make the sky more intense, I can do that. So actually let me turn down the sun so we can see the, the effects of the sky. So I can do, if I come up to six, Etc. and I can go back to the default values here. I can also change the backdrop independently from the brightness of my scene. So especially if you have you know, a bright HDRI like this, you might actually wanna bring down the brightness um, to get some more of those highlights. It probably just depends on, on your scene really. Um, and then of course I have, um, I've added this exposure compensation. So from the post-process volume, I basically gave you the exact exposure compensation that you would you would want there, but now you can change it right from this one area. So if you want the global exposure to be changed, you can change it that way. Um, same with the rotation of the sun, sky, and backdrop. So the backdrop and the sky typically should be rotated the same exact, uh, if you're using the same HDRI, 
they should be rotated the same. So for instance, if I want to change this to 180, then I should also change the backdrop to 180. Doing this in the, um, in the, the sky, in the default HDRI backdrop is very painful. You have to dig down into the components and it's not clear what you need to do. Same with the sun. So in this particular case, because I'm, I'm setting up the sun custom, um, you actually only need to change the Z. So if we rotate this, this backdrop, um, let's see, where is the sun in this one? So let's just say, let's rotate it to where the sun is pointing more this way. You only have to change the Z uh, rotation to, for, for the sun. So, this, so the angle of the, the shadow should be the same because the HDRI is not, the, the sun is not moving up or down in the sky. So you shouldn't actually need to change the Y, for instance. Uh, of course you can, but uh, you really, really need to change this Z. And then this you can also match. Um, I'll get into color in a second. You can also change your backdrop HDRI and the sky HDRI. So if you want to use your own, uh, you can do that. For an example, I'll just come into here and I'll bring in, um, let me do overcast forest path. Bring that into here bring that into here, and now we have that. Now again, because my, my, my sky, all my settings are set for that other one, uh, I'm gonna need to adjust these you know, to, to, to make up for it. But for now, I'm actually just gonna go back to the default. You get the idea. I'm actually gonna go to default on all these as well. Uh, and then I have um, just the film and toe and slope. These I use a lot uh, in the post-process volume, so I just like to have these uh, available. So I can, I can adjust those. Let me actually go back here, get back to where I was. There we go, all right. Um, all right, and then now let's go into color. So same like with the brightness. A lot of times, you know, you, you've lit a scene and you have lots of different things affecting your color. You might have the sun color. You might have the HDRI lighting color, which is the sky color. Um, you might also, your backdrop, uh, you might want to change that color. And then you have your other colors that you're getting from your post process volume. So I've added a bunch of those here. I'm going to continue to add more. But so for instance, let's just say we wanted to make the sun more uh, like a pink sky. We could choose like a pink somewhere in here. Then we could easily change the same for the sky or even the opposite. The sky might need to be more uh, blue, for instance. Um, so you might have a hard pinkish sun and, and, and blue sky, for example. And then same with the backdrop. The backdrop, you would also might want to change the color of the backdrop to match your scene, uh, scene lighting. So you can do that all quickly and easily right here. And then also I have backdrop saturation, so you can increase or decrease the saturation as needed just for the backdrop. Contrast as well. Uh, you can change the backdrop contrast. And then global, again, this is from the, the post-process volume. So if you want to change the global saturation, you can do that uh, right here. You change the, the, the saturation for your entire scene. Global contrast as well. And temperature. And tint. So that's sort of the, the meat and potatoes of this, uh, this, this, the HDRIs here. I have a few other tools that I've added. If you go into the Blueprints folder, most of these I'm still working on, but I'll show you this green sky, for instance. If I drag this into our scene, you can see it's not affecting the lighting, but now we have a green screen sky. So if I wanted to render out something and then replace the, ba the background sky with a 360 video or with a, I don't know, a different CG background or something entirely different, uh, this is just an easy way that I can do that. I'm also, the way I'm using live effects, I might actually end up doing it this way where I send the signal from uh, Unreal to live effects, key out the background, um, and then do something with that. I'm still sort of trying to figure out, I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with this yet, but it's there. Um, this one is basically nothing right now. I don't think, it was, I was just trying to set some, some basic uh, camera settings that I like to use. This one, the same thing. This is sort of, these are these are not even, I wouldn't even call these works in progress. These are sort of like tests that I was starting to look at and haven't really gotten anywhere with yet. Um, this one as well, just a, that's just a test. And then post-process volume. So the post-process volume that I've added here, it's basically j exactly what it sounds like. It's just a post-process volume. The only difference is that I've basically cranked up all of these settings to be, um, you know, uh, yeah, this one goes to 11, basically. So um, I put the, 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 
the hit lighting for reflections. I've basically just increased everything. I've turned on manual exposure by default. Um, yeah, basically the things that you would do in every every project, I've just gone ahead and turned on, and they're they're here for that. So that's what that's all this this post process does. And it is interesting. I'm still actually trying to figure out how post process vol volumes work in together because there's, for instance, a post process volume on this HDRI, and there's also this one that I just put in the scene. Um, I think that this one will actually kind of take precedence. So if I click on the post production here and I go to temperature and I turn this on and I change the temperature, it does affect the temperature for the whole scene. So I think that it actually will still make sense for you to have the post process volume as well as the post process volume on the um, HDRI master uh, because again you might need to change the color or the brightness quickly and you have those at your fingertips but you can still sort of have a overall post process that you can use for other reasons. Anyway, um, that's sort of the tools that I have available there. All right, so now let's talk about installing it. After you've downloaded LSVR tools, you'll get a zip file and you can right click on this extract all or however you want to unzip this and you should get a folder that's called LSVR tools. Inside that folder should be content resources and plugin. So you need to basically copy the parent folder, this LSVR tools. So copy this and then paste it either in your Unreal Engine plugins or in a specific project plugins, but don't do both. What I recommend is to do it in UE5 directly into the, um, the plugin. So if you go to wherever you installed UE5, then you go into Engine, plugins and then you paste it right in here so you can see I already have this is an older one that's okay I'm going to do control V to paste that into there and then once you have copied it you can go into edit plugins search for LSVR and then you can enable it you'll need to restart your engine and then after you restart the engine you'll it'll now be in the engine plugins, and then you navigate to the LSVR folder. Mine is actually not uh, installed here. It's installed uh, under the plugins folder. But basically, you'll have a folder called LSVR tools content. And then if you double click on that, you'll have three folders. You'll have blueprints, which is everything in here. You'll have HDRIs, which is everything in here. And then you'll have materials. You don't need to really mess with any of the materials. Um, and the only blueprint in here that's actually kind of interesting right now is the post process and potentially the sky if you want to do the green screen sky. But everything else is basically in HDRIs right now. So if you click on HDRIs, you have uh, a few different HDRIs that are ready to go now. So I can delete this out. You just drag one of these on. We delete that, drag a different one on, delete that, drag a different one on. And these are good to go as is. Uh, and then under textures, you'll find um, these are where all the HDRIs are going to be stored and you can see I have a few in here that are not set up yet I'll be setting those up later on tonight or some other time this this weekend So that pretty much wraps up this plugin so far I actually have a lot of ideas of what I want to add and some things I want to do I am definitely looking for feedback some things that I can do differently or things that might make things more uh, streamlined or better. So yeah, let me know if you have any feedback, if you have any questions. If you think this is going to be useful, definitely let me know. Definitely share it, talk about it, all that sort of stuff whenever I do end up um, releasing this. So all right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.